My mother died because my wife never provided her with decent meals. You're the worst wife, Sarah. Just get out. My husband shouted these words in front of the entire family. What a despicable man trying to corner me mentally even at a time like this. As I clenched my fists in anger, the next moment, all the relatives stood up from their seats. Then everyone bowed to me and silently left the room. W why A certain person spoke to my surprised and flustered husband. My name is Sarah, a 40-year-old housewife. I've been married to my husband James for five years. We met at a group blind date. At that time, I was struggling to find a partner, so I attended the blind date when a friend invited me. James was the center of attention among the men, engaging in various conversations and making everyone laugh when he spoke. I was attracted to his cheerful personality. Then when we changed seats and ended up next to each other, we discovered that we both really loved coffee, and we decided to go to a cafe together, which led us to meeting one-on-one. That was the beginning of him inviting me out for meals and cafe visits, and we started dating and eventually became a couple. I had so much fun spending time with them, and I became increasingly attracted to him. About a year after we started dating, he proposed to me and we decided to get married. I want you to be a housewife once we're married. I quit my job at the company I was working for and became a full-time housewife, just as he requested. Since then, I've been working hard on housework to support James. But soon after getting married, I began to regret it as he turned out to be quite the chauvinist. Hey, the ironing on my dress shirt isn't good enough. He said that, but looking at the shirt on the hanger, I honestly couldn't tell what was wrong with it. But since he said to redo it, I hurriedly re-ironed it while he ate breakfast. As I finished and hung it on the hanger, he left his dirty dishes and went to the bathroom. I was quite surprised by his behavior at this point. It was because he was a completely different person from the kind man he was before we got married. Well, I'm off. Have a good day. After seeing my husband off to work, I would always feel completely drained. Being together felt suffocating. Is this okay for newlyweds? I was soon overwhelmed with such anxiety after getting married. But still, I thought I should at least try married life for a year. I might have my own shortcomings as well. With that in mind, I tried to improve what I could. But James' attitude remained the same. You really are a useless wife. Why can't you do what I tell you? He relentlessly berated me like that. Despite it all, I continued with our married life for at least a year. One of the reasons I couldn't bring myself to divorce was my mother-in-law, Emma. Thank you, Sarah, for always helping out. It's such a relief having you here. Oh, don't mention it. Please don't hesitate to ask for anything. Feel free to tell me anything. Emma lived near us, and she had been living alone since her husband passed away. But recently, she had been struggling with housework because of her bad legs. So during the day, I would go to her house and help out as much as I could. From the very beginning of our marriage, she had been very kind to me, treating me like her own daughter. Our only child is James. We really wanted a daughter, too. That's why I'm so happy to have such a wonderful girl like you, Sarah, as my daughter-in-law. Oh, Emma. Having been told such things by her, it was difficult for me to talk to her about James' chauvinistic behavior, and I couldn't bring myself to divorce him, fearing it would make her sad. Amidst all this, something happened that made it even harder for me to divorce. What? Your mom was taken to the hospital? Yeah, so please go see her in the hospital. James told me that, and I rushed to the hospital. When I entered the hospital room, I saw her lying on the bed. Aw, oh, Sarah, you came. Emma! 
Are you alright? I'm sorry for making you worry. She had collapsed from a stroke while shopping and had been taken to the hospital by ambulance. I guess I'm getting old. You never know what might happen. She said this with a worried expression. It was painful for me to see her like that. A few hours later, after finishing work, James arrived at the hospital. Mom, are you okay? Ah, James, I'm sorry for worrying you. I'm fine. No, but you just collapsed out of the blue. Of course I'm worried. After making a worried face, James seemed to have a sudden idea and said this. Oh, I know. When you're discharged, Mom, let's live together. What? That way we can take care of you and if something happens, we can help you right away. I was shocked. Normally, you would first consult with your wife, me in this case, and propose the idea of living together to her after deciding together. But without involving me, he immediately brought up the idea of living together with this mother. It's as if I have no right to voice my opinion. If my mother-in-law agreed, I wouldn't be able to refuse. Well, I am worried about her and I don't mind living together, but I still wanted him to talk to me about it beforehand. Because he suddenly brought it up, it made her uncomfortable. But for Sarah, living with her mother-in-law could be difficult. When she said that, I almost told her, oh no, but James interrupted. No, 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 she doesn't mind at all. In fact, she's terrible at housework, so you should teach her. My mother-in-law was surprised by his remark. James, what are you talking about? Sarah is doing just fine. She's been a great help at my house too. As she defended me, James looked annoyed. Uh, well, as long as both of you are happy. Sarah, you're okay with living together, right? Uh, sure. Then as soon as mom is discharged, we'll move in together. James made the decision to live together in her house rather forcibly. A week later, when my mother-in-law was discharged, James and I terminated our rental apartment lease and moved in with her. Sarah, I look forward to living with you from today on. Same here. She greeted us warmly and our life together began in a peaceful way. I tried my best not to burden her with housework and took the initiative to do it myself, but she insisted on doing simple chores saying that she would become unhealthy if she didn't move. We cooked together and she taught me various recipes. Her cooking was truly delicious and I learned a lot. James seemed satisfied with the clean house and delicious meals. At first, I was unsure about how living together would work, but I started to think that it might be better for me. As a housewife living with just my husband, James was the only person I talked to. But having Emma around gave me someone to talk to during the day, which became a source of mental support for me. She would also step in when James was about to complain about something and take my side. When she scolded him, he would stop complaining, which was truly a blessing. In the blink of an eye, four years passed since we started living together. While I still had my share of complaints about my husband, I got along very well with my mother-in-law, so I didn't think much about divorce. But just when I thought things had finally settled down, James started to show even more unreasonable behavior. You're terrible at managing the household finances. What? You're spending too much on food. No, I think it's an average amount. No, it's too much. That's why I've decided to give you less money. What? I used to give you $370 for food expenses for the three of us, but starting this month, it's $170. What? That's not enough. It's more than enough. You just have to figure it out.
but we won't be able to get enough nutrition and we won't be able to eat satisfying amounts of food. Figuring that out is the job of a full-time housewife. James suddenly made such an unreasonable demand and he really only gave us $170 a month. There's no way we can cover the food expenses for three people with $170. I also want to make sure my mother-in-law gets nutritious meals too. But James wouldn't listen at all and he didn't give us any more money. So for now, I did my best to make nutritious meals within the $170 budget and I had to be incredibly creative. I bought large quantities of meat at wholesale supermarkets, divided them into smaller portions and froze them. I looked for discount vegetable stores and stocked up and I froze what could be frozen right away. I stopped buying all the snacks we used to buy and switched to cheaper bread. And I didn't forget to be inventive with the menu. I generally bulked up meat dishes with vegetables and tofu. I made sure to prepare soup almost every time so that we could fill our stomachs even with a small number of dishes. I think I'm doing really well. Emma also said, I know that you're trying to save money, but it's amazing that you can still make such delicious meals. And she apologized. I'm sorry that James is saying such outrageous things. Until now, if I warned him, he would stop doing unreasonable things, but this time he won't listen to me no matter what I say. So he wouldn't even listen to you. Although we're managing somehow now, I don't know how long we can keep living like this. Both Emma and I were quite worn out from being at the mercy of James' unreasonableness. And then my husband made another unbelievable remark. It looks like you can live comfortably with just $170. So let's make it $55 starting this month. What? Are you out of your mind? That's impossible! Oh, you haven't changed at all. It's not about whether you can or can't. It's about doing it. If not, I won't even give you $55. No. It's already so difficult and now he wants us to live on half the food budget? I felt like I was going crazy, but he really only gave us $55 a month. Fortunately, he started working more overtime and going out for drinks more often, so it was fine if I just prepared meals for my mother-in-law and myself, even if the menu was modest. But we definitely didn't have enough nutrition, so I went to several supermarkets to find where meat was on sale and bought meals with half-price stickers on. Of course I relied on the meat from the wholesale supermarket, but I had to buy beef and ground pork at a regular supermarket. Shopping by train was a waste of money, so I rode my bicycle around to stores. I think I really made a tremendous effort. But even in the midst of all that, my husband made another unbelievable remark. I don't get why I have to pay for utilities when I'm hardly ever home. My mom's name is still on the bill, so from now on, I'm not paying for utilities. I really couldn't take it anymore. That's not right. We're living in your mother's house, aren't we? You use the bath and you often fall asleep with the lights on when you come home late at night. If anything, your mom and I use less electricity. I angrily retorted, but my husband predictably got upset. Who do you think is feeding you? Have you forgotten that I'm providing the money for food? It's just $55 that he's giving us. What's with this attitude? That was my honest thought, but if we lost that $55, we would be the ones in trouble. Anyway, I'm not going to pay for utilities anymore. In the end, James forcibly decided on that as well. Emma and I were at our wit's end. Well, I can pay for utilities and such with my pension. Oh, Emma. 
Is there any way to break through this situation? In the midst of this, I came across some information. I thought maybe I could do this too. So I immediately put it into action. About half a year passed since then. Emma and I were somehow getting by with our frugal lifestyle when one day she suddenly fell ill and passed away. I was devastated. I couldn't believe that my mother-in-law who was my emotional support was gone. Even my husband was shocked. I can't believe my mom passed away. The wake began the next day and relatives and friends of Emma attended. But at this wake, James caused an unbelievable incident. It was about the food served at the wake. Everyone was eating and talking while thinking of my mother-in-law. In the midst of that, my husband, perhaps feeling tipsy from the alcohol, suddenly made an unthinkable remark. My mother died because my wife never provided her with decent meals. You're the worst wife, Sarah. Just get out. Don't ever set foot in my house again. James shouted these words in front of all the relatives. I was at a loss for words. We hardly spoke to each other and the time we spent together had decreased. The relationship between my mother-in-law and my husband had always been incompatible. But why would he blame me like this at such an occasion? He's really the worst man to try to corner me mentally even at a time like this. As I clenched my fists in anger, the next moment, all the relatives stood up. They all bowed to me and silently left. I was surprised. During the wake, all the relatives had left. James looked with wide eyes as the relatives left. W why Then a certain person spoke to my surprised and flustered husband. James, all the relatives know what you've been doing up to now. What? Who are you? I'm a lawyer who was commissioned by your mother. A lawyer? What do you want? Your mother left a will. I'll read it all out loud as it's written here. The lawyer read Emma's will in front of my husband and me. We were surprised at the contents. My mother-in-law had recorded the fact that my husband only gave us $55 per month for food expenses and didn't pay for utilities. She also recorded that he repeatedly made morally harassing remarks to me and sent these records to the relatives. The relatives, knowing everything, had left in disgust after hearing my husband's words. And my mother-in-law had even more shocking news for me. The will continued, and it mentioned his affair. It seemed that my mother-in-law had hired a private detective to investigate. The lawyer who had received the investigation results from Emma showed them to us. There were photos of James entering a hotel with his mistress looking affectionate. My husband turned pale upon seeing the photos. You want to tell me what this is all about? N no, this, this is, um, it's, it's not what it looks like. What is it then? You were having an affair. Well, that's, um... James was extremely flustered. He desperately tried to make excuses, but there was no escape with so much evidence. It seemed that James was having an affair with a junior at work. The reason he had reduced the money he gave to us was that he wanted to save money to enjoy his time with his mistress even more. Unbelievable. We're getting a divorce. You be paying me compensation. I'll also claim compensation for the moral harassment, not just the affair. No. James cried and apologized, but I absolutely did not want to forgive him. You even made the relatives leave. You're really hopeless. Don't you dare attend the funeral tomorrow. If you're there, we won't be able to properly send off your mom. Why don't you go back to your mistress now and discuss how to pay the compensation? When I said that, my husband left the scene with a frightened look. The next day, knowing that my husband wouldn't be attending, the relatives came to my mother-in-law's funeral, feeling relieved. We all said our goodbyes together. 
After that, I divorced my husband and claimed compensation from his mistress. James had to pay a total of $53,000 for moral harassment and the affair, while the mistress had to pay $37,000. The affair became known at their workplace, and the mistress couldn't bear the cold stares and resigned. As long as her parents paid the compensation on her behalf, I didn't care if she quit her job or not. Since my ex-husband had to pay more compensation than his mistress and had no savings, he couldn't quit his job and had to work with a heavy burden on his shoulders. By the way, when my ex-husband started to withhold money unreasonably, I had actually gotten information about a side job and started doing it. Thanks to working diligently, by the time I divorced my ex, I was earning about $900 per month. So now I'm thinking of working part-time while continuing my side job to earn enough income to live on my own. In any case, it was a relief that we were able to hold my mother-in-law's funeral properly and also punish my ex-husband. From now on, I plan to forget about my terrible ex-husband and start a new life. Thank you for watching until the end. My name is Emily Ditmore. I was supposed to be an ordinary housewife who could be found anywhere. I have no idea how things turned out the way they did. The newly built house I was living in is no longer in my possession. The company where I used to work is gone, and a new house is being built in its place. I live more than 100 miles away from my former residence, all by myself. In just a little over a year, my life has changed drastically. Despite the sorrow, my mind is somehow refreshed and clear. Something tumultuous happened in my life. I turned 50 this year. Most women in their 50s would be enjoying the second life with their husbands after their children have become independent or having new pleasures after the birth of grandchild. Others may be enjoying solitary life to the fullest. As for me, I was working for a wholesale company owned by my ex-husband, whom I married when I was 25 years old. It was originally started by my father-in-law, who passed away 10 years after we were married. My husband Scott, who was 35 at the time, took over the company. I had a different job that I had been working for a long time, but I resigned at the same time he took over the family business. We decided to run the company together as a couple. There was no hesitation in me. I thought it was normal for a married couple to support each other. I had seen Scott making tremendous efforts to take over the business even though he was young. Let's work together from now on. And so began our united couple operation. There were seven employees besides us and two part-timers for a total of 11. Since Scott took over, sales had been increasing every year, albeit slightly. We expanded our clientele more than my father-in-law's time and took small jobs within the community. Those things probably led to better results. The business was doing well, but we had a different problem. That was, we couldn't afford any more treatment. We were unable to conceive. The cause was somewhat mutual but we were told that it was manageable with treatment. No matter how hard we tried, from the time I was 30 until 40 for 10 years, the stork never came. Considering our age, we discontinued treatment at 40. We made a decision to be happy with the two of us. Scott understood, and although it was hard for me, too I had given up. And yet, what? You can't give me a grandchild? What about the heir? I can't be a grandmother? How are you going to take a blame for my son not being able to be a father because of you? Shame on you for abandoning your duty as a woman. My mother-in-law Jackie was the kind of person who said things like that to rub salt in my wounds. We had a relatively good relationship in the beginning. I wanted to have a daughter, but I couldn't, so I consider you as my daughter. She was sweet and treated me like her own. Our relationship deteriorated when I started going to infertility treatment. 
Why does it cost so much money to have a baby? She was in a state of disgust. At that time, infertility treatment was not covered by insurance and was indeed expensive. She was, to put it nicely, thrifty and careful, or, to put it worse, a cheapskate. That was why she was against us spending thousands of dollars on the treatment. She even pressured me to have a boy if I was to spend that kind of money. When she received a notice of termination of the treatment, she went into a rage. She told me to get a divorce and move out and called me a social misfit and an unfit woman. If Scott had not been there, I wonder what would have happened to me. It gave me a shiver up my spine. Despite what happened, Scott never mentioned a divorce. Keep us a good work for the company. He relied on me to continue doing my best. Our marriage was still going strong. One incident changed all that. Scott came home from work and excitedly showed me a flyer. A newly built house? 15 minutes drive to the shopping center, three bedrooms with a big yard, and a two-car garage. Wow, it's a pretty nice house. Despite the good location and perfect size, the real estate company was struggling to find a buyer. What was going on with such a nice house? Hey honey, let's buy this house. Hmm, I'd love to, but can we get a good mortgage at our age? I'm going to ask the bank tomorrow. The monthly loan will be tough, but our business is stable. I'm sure we can pay it off. It was true that the loan payment was going to be tough. I agreed with Scott, who was enthusiastic about the idea, that it was a small price to pay for a place where we could live in peace for the rest of our lives. We could get rid of our rental living and have a house of our own. It was pretty exciting. Once we decided, everything fell into place quickly. Scott talked with the bank and easily obtained a loan. How did you get a loan? I have a good credit score, so I managed to get a 15 year. Considering his age, it was the best he could get. I will leave the household finances to you as before. I will focus on increasing the company's sales to repay the loan. Got it. We'll do our best. And so we became house owners. At about the same time we bought the house, that infectious virus broke out on a global scale. We were greatly impacted by it. Our business partners were forced to close their offices, and because of that, our business dropped drastically. We stayed home more often, as there were fewer days with work. We thought that we just needed to be a little patient. We discussed how we would go through this, but then one day... Emily! Open the door! My evil mother-in-law came to see us. She took an hour by train to come all the way to our house, even though we were being told to refrain from going out. She didn't seem to have any purpose for her visit. It's so hard to breathe wearing a mask every day. Ever since we moved into our new house, she had been visiting us frequently. For some reason, her visit increased even more since the call to stay at home. Jackie, in this day and age, I don't think it's safe for you to visit us so often. I was worried about what my neighbors thought, and I didn't want to get sick either. Despite the fact that the whole country, or even the whole world, was trying to keep everyone in the house, she was not at all concerned. She had not the slightest interest in listening to me though. What did you say? I came to check on you guys because I was worried. You are terrible to say such a thing to your family. And then she repeated my exact words to Scott. Hey! He raised his voice and looked at me and Jackie. I can't believe you said that. I expected him to tell her to go home. That's terrible of you, Emily. What? Me? Honey, how could you say that to my mom? She came all the way to check on us. In 25 years of marriage, I had never seen him like that. 
He had always stayed out of our food. If anything, he defended me. The company's sales had plummeted, and the future was uncertain. I understood that he was under a lot of stress from the financial uncertainty that had built up after we had just purchased a house. Even so, I was surprised at the unexpected turn of events. Jackie became defiant when he joined her. That's right! I care about you as a family, but your attitude is terrible. She enjoyed scolding me. Then, Scott uttered something ridiculous. Mom, you're the kindest person I've ever met. I'm not sure if Emily and I can stay married in the future. If the company goes under, I don't think we'll be able to pay the mortgage. I can't sleep at night thinking about it, but she's so cold to me. Don't worry, I will take care of it, don't worry. Yeah, thanks mom. What did he mean by I was cold? Okay, even if I disregarded that, I couldn't ignore that a middle-aged man was pouting like her baby. I felt more creeped out than angry. I felt a shiver running down my spine, being reminded of the mother complex character in a comedy skit. From then on, he became completely brainwashed by Jackie. She came over every day without notice and stayed beside Scott the whole time. A wife is not a part of the family after all. The only people you can trust are your blood relatives. Yes, yes, that's right, mom. Thanks to you, I feel like I can do my best from now on. The mother and son holding hands. What a wonderful love between parent and child. Jackie was like a virus. As she visited us every day, slowly but surely, Scott's mind was eaten away. I like this house indeed. It's also close to the supermarket and the hospital. Oh, Emily, I'm going to take a shower soon. Please put out my underwear and towel. Before I knew it, she had become a resident of the house. There was no word of discretion in her mind. In fact, she even had real power in the household. Let's put the handrail on the stairs. It's hard to go up and down. Yes, I agree. Is there anything else inconveniencing you? Well, the little step in the shower. It's dangerous if I trip on it, so it should be removed. Why is there only a bathroom on the first floor? It would be better to have one on the second floor. She blurted out her selfish request triumphantly. Well, with all due respect, we are already strapped for cash with a mortgage payment. I don't really feel the need for a railing. Then not only she, but also Scott glared at me. What nonsense are you talking about? This is my house now. I deserve to have a comfortable living space. Excuse me? I don't like inconsiderate people. Do you know your position? You are nothing more than an ornament in this house. An ornament? What the hell did that mean? Scott followed to explain. Emily, you don't know how I feel. If I had a child, I'm sure my life would look much brighter now. In this pandemic, my business isn't going well. If I had stayed home alone with you, I would have gone crazy. You don't even try to understand how I feel and just exist in the house as a so-called wife. His statements were laced with hatred. Are you saying it's all my fault? Yes, it is. I'm only getting by because my mom's here. I got it. I was seen as less valuable than my sarcastic, stingy, and selfish mother-in-law. She was so good at brainwashing him that she could be a guru of a cult. Even though he was her own son, she easily tamed the grown man. If you don't like living here, get out. I don't have room to support you anyway. He stood up and pointed to the front door. Jackie leaned back on the sofa as if she were a queen and said, You know what, Emily? You should learn to be kind to your husband and his mother. Maybe that's why you couldn't have a baby. That had nothing to do with it. 
Her last comment put a dagger in my heart that had been somehow managing to hold on. That was the only time that I had ever cried until the tears dried out. The next day and the day after that, no matter how many times I wiped away the overflowing tears, my heart was heavy. When I became exhausted from crying and calmed down, a resolution was born in me. I'm leaving. Won't you regret it? Hell no! Scott snickered at me. Okay. I made up my mind then. I'm ready to say goodbye to you. At that moment, I became a warrior. I packed my bags and left the house immediately. I will never walk at your company again. Jackie was at the door to see me off. Don't ever come back! Here is a parting gift! I checked the contents of the manila envelope and struck a gut punching pose in my mind. I nodded slightly to her in a graceful manner and left the place. I had kept my savings from my single days and an inheritance of my parents, who had passed away 10 years before. I was able to get a place to live and took time to think about what to do next. Just a few months after I left. Hey, what have you done? What are you talking about? Scott came to me in a panic. I grinned in my mind. He must have regretted his decision. If he hadn't teamed up with his mother to neglect his wife, none of that would have happened. Why do I have $2,500 in loan repayment every month? You never told me. Ranting in tears, he had lost weight in just a few months and had aged at least by 10 years. Look, we were going to pay off the $400,000 loan in 15 years. Of course, we have to pay back that much every month. But it was $1,300 until now, right? Why the sudden doubling? Can you use your brain sometimes? I don't live in that house, so why should I keep paying? What? Why do you think it's normal for me to pay the mortgage when I don't even live there? Do you think that just because I'm your wife, I'm obligated to pay for it? But you're my wife! He must have thought that wives were slaves or something. Well, I thought to hear him out. The orders have stopped coming in at once. I knew it was inevitable in this situation, but I received almost no order last month. Even some of our old clients have cut me off. Oh yeah, I know. Those are stores in the shopping center and a supermarket in front of the station, right? You know about that? Of course I knew. The clients politely called me and told me that they were sorry but they were going to quit using his service. I even laughed when I heard their reason. How did you find out? I pity you for having your business ruined by your own mother. What does my mom have to do with it? It was simple. Jackie bat-mouthed me in the neighborhood, at the supermarket, at the hospital and everywhere. In the unusual pandemic situation, it was normal to be careful when talking with people, and yet, she was cursing me out in a loud and vulgar manner. She even tried to go to the neighbor's house to have a chit-chat. She did whatever she wanted. Because of her, he himself and even the company's credibility deteriorated. A man who kicks out his wife, who has supported the business and protect his crazy mother is not worthy of trust. We have taken every precaution to avoid catching the virus, but that old woman had ruined it. I informed the client who called me. The company may not be around much longer. Coming from someone who was involved in the management, they took my words seriously and stopped dealing with Scott's business. There was more disaster for him. The employees are leaving one after another. We don't have enough staff to look for new clients. It's inevitable since the company is on the verge of collapse, isn't it? They have lives to lead, and they don't want to go down together. But that's so heartless. I decided not to harm him anymore, and kept quiet about his employees who had asked me for advice about resigning.
One of them even told me that they were not so stupid as to follow a boss who kicked his wife out at the behest of such an evil mother. I guess that it wasn't necessary to mention to him. What am I going to do? What should I do now? Um, I have no clue. I didn't do anything wrong, but somehow things are getting worse. Why is that? Well, if you didn't do anything wrong, why can't things work out? I repeated back his words, and he grew impatient and angry. How can you act like this have nothing to do with you? What a heartless woman you are when your husband is such trouble. I had finally reached the limit of my patience with him, who was egocentric and insensitive. You know, who made me such a heartless wife? Didn't you and your mother turn me into your enemy? Are you stupid for dreaming that I will always be on your side? Stupid? Yes, you are brainless. I am the same as your employees. I am not going to fall with you. Then I showed him something I had been keeping for a long time. I am finally going to file this. It was a petition for divorce Jackie had given me as a parting gift. How did you get that? Your mother gave it to me. I really appreciate her for this one. She gave me an ace in the hole. Wait, I wrote that as a joke and didn't mean it. His lamentations were in vain. With a piece of paper, we were going to be strangers. In the end, he had to let go of that company. He couldn't pay the mortgage on the house and pay the remaining debt with the money from the sale. I heard it wasn't enough and he was working to pay back the loan. The relationship between him and his mother deteriorated. When he came out from her brainwashing, he blamed her to the extreme. My life is ruined because of you. If it weren't for you, you witch! How dare you call me that! I'm your mother! Because of you, I lost Emily and my company. You're a witch! What are you talking about? You hated her too. It's not just my fault. You should have put a collar on her. They argued loudly every night and caused a commotion in the neighborhood. They blamed each other, but they were exactly the same. In the end, they parted ways and stopped talking to each other. Jackie was quite shocked that her only son cut her off. I heard that she became a soulless invalid and was living alone in her apartment. I wondered if she had any remorse. Maybe she no longer even understood anything. As for me, I would have been lost without you. Thank you so much. That's not true. I just introduced you to a company that was looking for the qualifications you had. I helped an ex-employee at Scott's company find a new job. How do you know so much about recruitment? Before I started helping Scott, I worked for an HR consulting firm. That was already 15 years ago. I'm glad I got certified back then. I never thought it would be so useful. I'm now working as a career consultant. My job is to help clients to find suitable jobs. But that's not all. There are people who have to work for various reasons in the world. I'm a housewife, but my husband is having an affair. I thought I can't go on like this. I'm hoping to find a job and become independent. Many desperate people come to me for advice. My job is to think together with such clients and find the best option for them. I never say things like, your husband is a jerk, you should leave right now. A consultant's job is to listen to what they have to say and to be close to their thoughts and feelings. However, it is also my nature as a middle-aged woman to want to say, just get a divorce, you will feel so much better like me. I got kicked out by my ex-husband of 25 years, lost my job, and then divorced. I may look pitiful in people's eyes, but I don't feel sad. In fact, I feel happy. The reason for this is, thank you for listening to me. I'm going to start a new life. I have clients who appreciate me.